Hi, and welcome to this Mac Pro video course on Pro Tools 11's plugins. I'm Joe Albano, and I'll be taking you through all the different signal processing plugins that come built in in Pro Tools 11. This course won't include the instruments, that'd be a subject for another day, but it will include all the other types of plugins that Pro Tools has to offer. I'll be breaking them up into categories based on the way Pro Tools organizes them. Since this is a guide for people who are assumedly new to these processors, I'll also include a little background on the effects they produce, and try to show them doing their thing in context of typical applications whenever possible. Pro Tools plugins are inserted, or instantiated to use a fancier word, from the menus you see when clicking on any of the 10 insert slots in any channel strip of the Pro Tools mixer. The plugin categories and their associated processors are as follows. You've got EQ, or equalization, basically tone controls, Dynamics. This includes a collection of compressors and expanders, which can be used to dynamically control levels in a mix, and also as effects to fatten up the sound of various tracks. There's even a simulation of a real hardware compressor and a mastering limiter included. There's a pitch shifter plugin for special effects. There are several reverb plugins for adding room sound to recordings. Delay and modulation plugins. These provide a whole range of effects from familiar ones like echo and chorus to some really crazy sound effects like synthesized voices. Under harmonic are a group of plugins that create distortion, from guitar amp simulation to fuzz and digital distortion effects. Dither is a specialized function used in some mastering applications. Sound field includes plugins that work with stereo imaging, like creating a wide stereo sound field from a mono track, or familiar effects like back and forth auto panning. As I said, the instruments won't be included here. There's enough there for a whole separate course. And finally, in the other category, are a few useful general utility plugins. The plugins come in mono or stereo versions. If you're on a mono track, some plugins offer a mono in stereo out option. If you're on a stereo track, multi channel are the basic stereo versions, and multi mono are versions where left and right can sometimes be unlinked and processed separately. The interface for all the plugins in Pro Tools has some common elements. You see them in the gray header area at the top of every plugin. Under track, there are two submenus that let you navigate plugins right from within the floating plugin window itself. The top left menu lets you switch tracks. You'll see whatever plugin is in the same slot as the one that's currently open. If you glance at the mixer to the left, you can see them switching. Just to the right of that is a menu that lets you switch slots to see other plugins in any of the 10 insert slots. Just below is the same menu as the one you call up from the insert slot in the channel strip. Under Preset are menus that let you access any factory or user presets, or settings, available. You can also step through these more conveniently with the minus and plus buttons just below. The little round menu button up top there gives you the options for loading and saving preset settings to disk, and copying and pasting them from one plugin to another. There are also options for managing these plugin preset files on disk. Auto lets you enable automation capability for plugin controls. And finally, and maybe most importantly, the Bypass button. Bypass temporarily disables the plugin's effect without losing any settings you may have dialed up. No matter what kind of processing you're doing, it's always a good idea to frequently bypass the effect as you're working on it, to get a better idea of just how far you've come from the original sound. Next up, for anyone who might be in need of a little background, I'll very briefly go over some basic audio theory and terminology before jumping into the plugins themselves. 